So I'm sure you guys have noticed the past couple of videos I've been doing some Call of Duty gameplay for the channel. And that's because I'm really having a lot of fun going back to a lot of these older Call of Duty games, especially Modern Warfare 2, which is what you see right now. That game is definitely one of my favorite FPS games that I've ever played. And that's why I love backwards compatibility so much, because I can go back and play those older games instead of having to dig up old consoles and dig up the dust on my old Xbox 360, which I don't even have anymore because of backwards compatibility. So yeah, it's a great feature. I'm glad that we have it now. But you know what would be even better? If I can play all of my Xbox games on PC. So obviously with PC and Xbox, those two platforms have kind of been merging together in recent years. Microsoft putting all their Xbox exclusives on PC and even integrating Xbox Live with Windows and PC gaming. So I guess the next logical step in that direction would be to integrate PC and Xbox completely so that the console Xbox and the Xbox experience on PC are one in the same. Now if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, you've known that I've had a lot of things to say about the Xbox Series X and the Xbox brand. Mostly negative things, talking about how it's really not a great idea for selling a console to put your games on other platforms, because exclusive content is really the only thing that makes a console relevant. But I've also said that as a PC gamer, because I do have a pretty powerful gaming PC, this is nothing but great for me. But for console gamers, this is not going to be good because Sony is going to wipe the floor with Microsoft with the PlayStation 5. I mean, the Series X doesn't stand much of a chance going up against Sony with the PlayStation 5. I hope I'm wrong because I love competition. Competition is a great thing. There is no case where competition is bad. Competition is always good and monopolies are always bad. And I certainly don't want a Sony monopoly over the console market. That would just be awful. But Microsoft has demonstrated to us that they don't care so much about the hardware as they care about you buying into their services like Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live Gold, which is very interesting because on PC, Xbox Live is free. You can play online multiplayer and do everything the console gamers can do for free. So if you want to play like, I don't know, State of Decay 2 or Halo Master Chief Collection online on PC, you could do that for free without paying $60 a year, but if you want to do that on the Xbox, you have to pay the 60 bucks. And then you have Game Pass Ultimate, which includes the console and the PC Game Pass into one. My whole thing is like, okay, if you're going to do integration with the Xbox platform on consoles and the Windows platform on PC, if you're going to integrate those things together, you might as well go all the way. How about instead of a Game Pass Ultimate, it's just Game Pass. Game Pass gets you all the games for one subscription instead of it being split between the Xbox and PC because what's really the meaningful difference between playing Xbox games on your console and playing Xbox games on your PC? Except obviously on PC it's better because you have a lot more customization options and all that. But really, why does that have to be separate? And the whole point about Xbox Live Gold, I know I bring that up a lot and I'm sorry if it seems like I'm beating on a dead horse, but that's a very interesting point to bring up though because why should Xbox gamers on the consoles have to pay for Xbox Live while on PC it's completely free to play on Xbox Live? I think in the next generation Microsoft really needs to address this problem that they have where there's no consistency. Like they're trying to bring the two things together but on the consoles it's just an inferior experience and much better on PC and that's not just the graphics it's just the overall experience you don't have to pay for online and you just have so many more options in how you play your games so in putting your exclusives on PC and not having a paywall behind playing those games online on PC Microsoft has demonstrated that they don't really care if PC gamers buy an Xbox console just that they're invested in the Xbox brand by using their services on Windows. So in the next generation, we might get to a point where there is no Game Pass Ultimate, it's just Game Pass. And the Xbox brand isn't just locked to a specific set of hardware like the Series X or the Xbox One X or the Xbox One S. Your gaming PC can also be considered an Xbox. We're pretty much at that point already. We're really close at least. So at that point, I mean, we're getting there and it seems like there's really no incentive for a PC gamer to buy an Xbox console unless you already have an Xbox, like you have an Xbox One and you have a lot of games in your library and you don't want to give those games up. In that case, you really only have two options. Just keep your Xbox One and keep playing those games, which I guess I'm willing to do. I mean, I'm doing it right now, except I have to pay the $60 a year. And the only reason why I have Xbox Live Gold right now 
is because of Bing rewards. I'm doing searches on Bing, and they're paying me to do searches, and I get to redeem the points for Xbox gift cards. That's the only reason why I have Xbox Live Gold right now. And once that runs out, I'm probably not going to actually pay them for an online subscription because I'm used to having it for free on PC. And to me, that's just a complete waste of money. I'm just, no, not going to do that. So in that case, you really don't have any options. You could rebuy the games on PC. So I have the Halo Master Chief Collection on the Xbox One. So that means I have to buy it again on Steam, pay another $40, just to say I could play it on my PC. And yeah, I get it. There are obviously games like the Master Chief Collection that aren't as simple as just porting it over from Xbox to PC because there are a lot more variables at play. Like they got Halo Reach, they got Halo 1, they're starting to get Halo 2, but you still got Halo 3 and Halo 4 to put over to the PC. And it's taken them some time to do that. So my point is that what I want in the sense of being able to play all my Xbox games to be able to transfer my entire console library over to PC, that might not be completely seamless and it might not be entirely possible technologically to be able to have all of them transfer over to PC. I mean, that might not be completely feasible, but it's something that I really want. I mean, I invested so much time into my Xbox game library over the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, probably even longer than that. And to just have to rebuy those games on PC or pay $60 a year to play them online, uh, those two options don't sound very appealing to me. So what might end up happening is that even though I love to play these old games on the 360 and the Xbox One, I I I'm not going to pay that money. I'm not going to rebuy these games on PC, especially like the Call of Duty games. Those communities on PC are completely dead, but they're alive on the Xbox One. So in that case, playing on console really is my only option. So even though I'm not entirely sure how it would work and if it's even feasible, I would love nothing more for it to be fully integrated, for the Xbox on console and the Windows PC to be fully integrated into one platform to the point where my gaming PC that I have right now is essentially an Xbox console. And in a lot of aspects, it already kind of is. I'm using the Xbox Game Bar to record my gameplay on PC. It's a built-in game recorder. I'm connecting to Xbox Live to talk to my friends on Party Chat with the PC and not on the console. And I'm playing these Xbox games online on PC without having to pay $60. So not only is it the same experience, but it's also more and it's better on PC. So at that point, why should I pay more money to transfer my library over to PC by rebuying the games on PC on the Xbox or Windows Store, whatever you want to call it, on PC, when these are games I already bought and I already put countless hours into? That's just a complete waste of money. The thing is, Microsoft did develop a patent to allow for their Xbox games to be readable on disc for PC. So if you have a Blu-ray drive on your PC, the PC can read your disc and then install it. Now, I don't know if this is going to come out, when it's going to come out, but there is some technology that is being developed to accommodate people like me on PC, which is great. And obviously, their ultimate motive is to expand their PC market presence by having such a large library of Xbox 360 and Xbox One games that are playable on PC. And that's really the main thing that they're trying to get at here. They want you to buy their games whether you're on PC or whether you're on the Xbox console. They want you to buy their games. I think the only thing that's really holding them back from fully implementing and fully integrating PC and console into one, Microsoft, is the potential conflict with third-party publishers. So, for example, I have Overwatch on the Xbox One. I never played it on PC and I really want to play the PC version because hero shooters like Overwatch are just so much better on PC and I would love to play the PC version, but I have it on Xbox One. So if Microsoft's like, okay, yeah, you could read your Xbox One disc or your digital library on Xbox One, whatever, and it could be transferred over to PC, Activision's probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, we have our own client on PC called Battle.net and that's how we want people to play the game on PC is through Battle.net because we do not have to share our profits with Microsoft or Sony or any of the console makers or Valve with Steam. We have our own client, Battle.net, and that's how we want people to play the game on PC. But then Microsoft all of a sudden allows you to transfer the Xbox games over to PC. Activision Blizzard might have a little bit of a problem with that because that doesn't really benefit them. They have no reason to get on board with such a program that allows you to play your Xbox One games on the PC with full PC features. That's the other thing. If they do transfer it over, can you run it like it was the PC version or are you limited to the console features? Like you can't adjust the graphic settings, 
Maybe you can't even play on keyboard and mouse. Like certain things like that. That may be a bit of a challenge because you have to work with the third party publishers to really make this possible. And it seems like Microsoft wants it to happen, but it might just be a little bit too challenging for them. So let me know what you guys think in the comments about the potential future of the Xbox brand and its full integration between PC and console. How much further are they going to go with this? Do you think there will ever be a system in place where you can transfer your entire Xbox console library over to PC and it will be completely seamless? Like, how do you think that will work? Will it ever work? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye.